David Clark. Mr Chair, thank you. Um, I, t I rise to take a call and uh, as I do, I want to um, comment to start off that this is perhaps one of the least offensive provisions uh, in the bill. Um, so my comments must be taken in that context. Um, as I start, I just want to remind ourselves of a few facts. I do want to talk about the barriers that this presents because I think it contributes further to, to, in some small way, to the barriers uh, to tertiary education that I, I uh, spoke about in part one. Um, reminding ourselves that 58% of the borrowers are women and that 17,000 is the average amount um, held in a student loan. Uh, and that the total debt is 12 billion. This, this, these provisions in this particular part are all aimed at uh, grabbing back, grasping back, perhaps we could say, um, some of that debt hole uh, that is running up. The contact person is a means of getting to um, those who have money owing, and perhaps it's those who've taken a repayment holiday who have uh, disappeared into the ether. Um, so th there's a sense in which this is all part of the same um, the same objective, uh, and it's all aimed at grasping back $5 million of a $12 billion debt. And the, in that context, the fact that we're spending an estimated uh, $2,761,000 worth of parliamentary time to pass this bit of legislation is infuriating. Um, and it's, it's spurious to suggest that this, that, that this will encourage students to uh, repay when the government's own officials at Treasury and Ministry of Education have questioned whether this is really true. In fact, they suggest, uh, Mr Chair, that this um, legislation, uh, as, it re as it relates to those who are overseas, um, may in fact encourage them to stay overseas and uh, it presents a barrier in that respect. Now, the Labour Party is of course opposed to barriers to tertiary education and this relates to our belief that um, in the basic principles of fairness and opportunity, um, and they are principles which um, National has historically tended to ignore when it comes to dealing with the student loan scheme. We'll remember that Labor introduced interest-free loans and National introduced a fee for administration. This is, order. This is quite so, a narrow debate. This yeah, yeah. Mr. Chair, <laughs> Mr. Chair, just returning to the point, um, which is about um, collecting this debt and the role of contact people in that, uh, Mr Chair, and I thank you for your guidance. Uh, I, um, I really wanted to say, uh, and, and I, I draw this to a close shortly, that um, the, the parents of um, a person undertaking tertiary education are the best predictors of that person's outcome, and likely they will be the people um, who are those contact people. You know, if there is a sense when students go to undertake tertiary education that they're going to be reported on by their parents, um, when, if they fail to uh, meet some of the payments or they fall into difficult circumstances whilst overseas, that will be very disappointing indeed. So that's why, Mr. Mr Chair, I think it's important that this is clearly signalled to those whom it will affect and that we uh, remain conscious of the potential barrier, another potential barrier to tertiary education that could exist in naming uh, a contact person and making that, that contact person provision stronger. Um, as I've said at the beginning, Mr Chair, and to conclude, this is perhaps one of the least defensive uh, provisions in the bill, but I think it is, is worth um, considering the implications of it. Thank you. Mr Chair. Holly Walker. Mr Chair, um, for the opportunity to take a short call on part two of the bill, I